Hello and welcome to the Westwood Expansion series. Nobody wants this. This is going to be a really boring series, but I think we're going to get through it. We get through it together. We'll go through all the boring stuff and then we can move on, forget about it, and then go into the fun stuff. We can get on sexual tension, the Civil War. So just stick around for Westwood Expansion. We'll get through it. Thank you. Enjoy. Ish. So if we first look at exploration, we can start with Lewis and Clark, who were the first main explorers of the West, who were paid by Jefferson, who Jefferson wanted to explore these new lands acquired by the Louisiana Purchase, which we will get to. And so these explored these new lands. They gained a lot of knowledge from the area, scientific data, stuff like that. They had maps of 4,000 miles, which they published. So they were helpful in opening up the West and the library was expected to grow in the sense that they kind of opened it up for people where they kind of proved how it was accessible and ordinary people could go and explore it for an adventure they can go and settle down there and stuff like that so it kind of allowed the barrier to be broken down metaphorically and it gave people the confidence to move there especially with the maps they published so it meant people felt like they had a route to go that it was lands that had been explored so it weren't just unknown territory but I think there's a lot of limitations in the fact that there is limitations. So like 4,000 miles, great. Louisiana Purchase is 823,000 miles. So it's not really enough for people to have the confidence to go there on their own. And also they still had no actual reason to move there because there was no economic prospects, no jobs, nothing like that, no industry. Then we've got two other guys who are a bit irrelevant. We've got a pike who explored in like 1806, 1807. I think he was the first person who properly explored the Great Plains and so again he explored new lands, opened them up for people but I think his knowledge wasn't detailed enough to influence any settlement and then there was Long who was a bit later on in 1819, 1820 and he travelled through places like Nebraska, Colorado, so he's getting a bit further on and he gave knowledge about these new lands again, um, provided little incentive however I think it's a problem because there is no reason to go and these explorers aren't telling people to go because of great economic prospects. They're just kind of telling us what the land is and giving us maps, showing us what it is, but giving nobody a reason to move. I think specifically with Long, he almost discouraged Salmon in the fact that he commented on how the plains were inhabitable and stuff like that, that people shouldn't be moving to these lands because they're not suitable for human life. Except for Native Americans though, suitable for them. Now we can move on to the Louisiana Purchase. So this was in 1803 with President Jefferson and he gave James Monroe the authority to sign a treaty with France for Louisiana, the land of Louisiana, which is, it was 828,000 square miles. So a lot bigger than Louisiana today, not like the little thing in the south. Like it doubled the territory of the US from like the eastern states, so if you can picture it, to the whole of Louisiana as well. And so, double the size of the US, it provided the basis for Westwood expansion, which is what this topic is. So, it is definitely important in that it gave the lands to move on. And also, it gave things like the part of New Orleans, which is what was asked for specifically. But then France was like, you can have the full thing. But then it gave control of the Mississippi. So, for things like transportation, communications and trade, economic purposes, the Mississippi is really important for that. So, again, that's opening up Westwood expansion and giving it economic prospects and also it removed France entirely from the USA so it's given America more control over itself which allows us the expansion where people move into lands which are American lands so it provided the basis for Westwood expansion and also began kind of the ideas where America wanted to move from the Atlantic to the Pacific and so you can go do 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 and so Louisiana purchase really started off this ambition this drive this early form of Manifest Destiny, although it wasn't a concept yet, we have to wait later for that. But it is that kind of rationale beginning to develop. <laughs> and the Louisiana Purchase is still limited by the fact, even though it does provide the land and the basis for Westford Expansion, it is still mostly inhabitable, where it consists mostly of the Great Plains. And again, people still have no real motive to move there because there's no economic prospects. People don't really have the ability to move there because there's not really any established communications yet. But again, it does provide the basis. So it's what's built upon and it makes Westwood expansion possible, but it just doesn't 
kind of elevate. So if we now look at territorial expansion, we can first look at the Missouri Compromise, which was when in 1819, Missouri, the state, southern state, brought it to join the Union, brought it to join as the slave state, which would tip the balance of 1111, which is in the Union at this time for slave and free. And so to compromise, Missouri Compromise, Compromise of 1820, Compromise, they also added Maine as a new state, which would join as a free state, so it would keep the balance and not tip it between any other side. But then, for the expansion purposes, it is not, 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 notable, 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 notable. It's notable in the fact that it brings in two new states, but we need to look at the limitations where Maine is tiny, it's like that, in the north, and it's in the north, but it's not actually in the west, so we're not really expanding west, are we we're expanding north. And also these lands were already habitated, so they were already, people already lived there, so nobody was moving to get there now they were in the Union, which is, I think, what we want to look at, reasons why people are moving to new places, not just places joining the Union, because people already live there. So now we can look at the expansion into Florida and acquiring Florida the land, so the little one in the south, yeah. So it was acquired from Spain from fears that it was going to be used as a base for attack, because if Spanish troops are in Florida, they can go up. Also, the southerners were already be used as a base for runaway slaves because that's what the South always think. So, America had to acquire it. So, settlers began moving into Florida to expand for new space. And then in 1810, they seized Baton Rouge and they proclaimed the Republic of West Florida. And then settlers began moving more into Florida to gain more land. And then, and then Madison, the president at the time, um, encouraged people to settle the whole of Florida, which is what happened. And it was a success. So in 1819, the Adam Onish Treaty, or the Transcontinental Treaty, was passed, which gave America access and gave all of Florida to the US. So I think these are important in Westwood expansion because we are slowly getting these new big pieces of land which will become significant as a base for American people to expand into. But then there is a lot of limitations for it in the sense that A, immoral because Native Americans lived there and you have to kick them out which we'll go through in the Native American topic. But also people already live there still so you're not really expanding into any new lands. And if now we'll finally look, finally we'll look at expansion into Texas. So I think settlers were moving into Texas quite a lot throughout the 1820s, even though it was owned by Mexico. But then this became significant, the Mexican ownership, because in 1829 Mexico freed all its slaves. And as we know, America in the South still had slavery and depended on it. And then in 1830, I think due to this kind of clash with slavery, um, Mexico prohibited any more American in immigration into Texas. Yet the settlement continued and continued, people were still moving into Texas because it wasn't really enforced. And then this led to the Battle of the Alamo in 1836, which was where Mexican forces killed a small number of Texans who were trying to fight for what they saw as their lands. And then from this, I think Texas declared itself independent in defiance and Americans came to defend Texas, specifically Southern Americans, I think some Western Americans as well, because they saw kind of like the Alamo and the Texans from that as kind of martyrs, so they wanted to make sure they didn't die in vain, that kind of thing. And then this was a success. So then Mexicans retreated and President Santa Ana, who was president of Mexico at the time, agreed to Texan independence. Now we can look at the impact of territorial expansion as a whole. I think it definitely was important for Westbury expansion because it spread not only Americans themselves but American ideas across the continent and made the continent itself more American and more aligned with them and their views and also along this process removing any foreign imports like the Mexicans in Texas, French in French the Spanish in Florida, etc. But then we do have a lot of weaknesses where a lot of this land was already inhabited. So Texas, Maine, Florida 
they still they had people in them at the time that they were acquired into the union so you don't actually really expand anywhere but i still do think it's important in the fact that it's officially making these lands part of america it's making the people who live there american and in the union so it is increasing america increasing their influence even if people already live there because it's solidifying the fact that these are now american states and not just lands which americans live in so again yeah american ideas and culture is being spread as a result and this it was after texas became part of america in 1845 that is what influenced mostly the article by john sullivan which was the manifest destiny article which we'll go into later but it, again it shows the importance of these territorial expansions in driving the idea of spreading American culture and influence across the continent and really bringing Western expansion to a new level.